Hello everyone, my name is Hunter, a meteorologist here at Weather on the Go, and in today's video we're going to be focusing on the El Nino that is fading quickly, but La Nina is returning here in 2024. We'll also be looking at your spring and summer temperature and precipitation forecast through the each of the months all the way through the August time frame, and we'll be also looking at the severe weather season update as well as your hurricane season preview view in today's video. If you are new here to Weather on the Go, make sure that to subscribe down below. You definitely get detailed, accurate weather forecasts here on this channel. Also, be sure to press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. So let's look here at El Nino, and this is a chart that you look at when you look at El Nino, Enso Neutral, or La Nina conditions. The positive values above plus 0.5 are El Nino conditions. 0.5 to negative 0.5 is Enso neutral and minus 0.5 or lower is La Nina. So you see currently we are at a plus 0.6. We are still at a weak El Nino right now. And you can tell that we still do have some warmer sea surface temperature anomalies out here across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. But look at these deep blues starting to develop near the coast there of South America and spreading westbound. Those are the upwellings of the colder sea surface temperatures from underneath the sea, uh, the surface of the water. And that is actually going to turn to Enso neutral and eventually La Nina conditions this spring and summer. So this is the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center as of a couple of days ago. And you can see El Nino conditions here in the red does continue with at least a 95% chance here through the rest of April. We turn to Enso neutral or conditions, an 85% chance of that developing in May. We dropped that down to a 71% chance into June. And then look at that, La Nina in the blue starting to increase those probabilities by July, August, and eventually by September, an 80% chance of that occurring here by the early fall of 2024. So let's look here at your spring between now and June 1st here, that would be meteorological spring. You can see the rest of April, we're gonna see a very active subtropical jet down here across the Pacific Southwest, but into the Southern Plains and a ridge of high pressure will be in firm control across the east of the United States here most of the rest of April. And what this means is with a ridge of high pressure comes warmer, temperature anomalies. And you can see that across the eastern two thirds of the country, whereas that with that subtropical jet, temperatures will be near normal to below normal here across the Pacific Southwest and into the Southern Plains, especially when given a lot of that active weather here, that's going to be pulling in a lot of that Eastern Pacific moisture. The Gulf of Mexico is open and we have to keep an eye on some severe weather events during the middle and late portion of April from the Great Plains eastward through the Mississippi Valley the Ohio Valley and over here towards the East Coast. Drier weather can be expected here overall through the next couple of weeks through April for the Pacific Northwest down through the West Coast and parts of the Southeast Coast as well. Now, as we go into May timeframe, we start to see a little bit of a ridge develop. Now, it's a weak ridge of high pressure. You can see here most of the U.S., the lower 48 and southern Canada will be dealing with above normal temperatures. It's not going to be an overly hot month here. I do think there is some chance for some very warm conditions out west across the Rockies and the Pacific Northwest and also out east here as we go into the northeast, the mid-Atlantic and down into the southeast there. But the middle of the country, look at that, near normal to slightly above normal temperatures. And the reason why we're not really above normal, it's going to be active in May. We're going to have a lot of precipitation here across the Great Plains, a lot of precipitation down here in the deep south, and that could lead to more significant severe weather as we do go through the month of May across these regions. Now let's look here at your meteorological summer time frame, June 1st through that September time frame. And you can see as we go into June, there's that ridge of high pressure. You can see that little donut hole elongating from portions of the Baja of California through Northern Mexico, but also the Rio Grande Valley up into central Texas. That's that ridge of high pressure that will be building out of Northern Mexico, building northbound. And we're gonna see the periphery of that across the high plains up here into the upper Midwest 
and the Ohio Valley Great Lakes region as we go into June, which means under the influence of that high pressure system, we're going to have some very hot temperatures, well above normal for Mexico, up there into Texas, the Four Corners region here, Utah, Colorado, back into Arizona, New Mexico, much of the Rockies and out west going to be very hot, sweltering conditions as we go into June, a little bit cooler out east, but still slightly above normal temperature anomalies out east in the eastern third of the country through June. But with that, again, active weather will keep our temperatures cooler here across the eastern two thirds. But if you're under the influence of that high pressure ridge out west, very dry conditions, the drought will likely be building out here across the Rockies. Even down into New Mexico more, we already have a significant drought now. That will continue to worsen into June. West Texas as well, down into Mexico, the drought will be building. And then as we go into July, that ridge will just build further north and stronger across the United States. Now the northern periphery of that ridge is up across southern Canada into the upper Great Lakes region and over here into the northeast, which means much more of the United States will be dealing with hotter temperatures, not only just out west, but that will be spreading east through the Great Plains into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and even the eastern two-thirds starting to get a lot warmer as we go into July. July looks to be one of the hottest months this summer. And you can see here, while there is a signal for precipitation and above normal precipitation in areas like the Great Lakes region or maybe down here into the Rio Grande Valley, we don't really see a good overall organized signal for really meaningful precipitation. So I do think overall, the lower 48 in the United States, even Southern Canada, this will be a dry month. I think July will be a pretty dry month as that ridge begins to take over much of the United States. And then as we go into August, just basically a continuation of that ridge of high pressure into August that we saw in July. So we'll see that again centered across the Four Corners region in West Texas. There we go, August, another very hot month as well. So July and August are gonna be two of the hottest months here this summer and this year. And again, the hottest, especially out West, but some of that heat will be spreading further East here as well. And you can see August, besides near the Gulf Coast, according to me, you know, the hurricane season, some tropical activity down there, enhancing some of our precipitation anomalies. I think August as well does have a likely proposition of being drier than normal for a lot of us in the lower 48 and across Southern Canada. Now let's look here at your 2024 severe weather season update. I did make some changes here. So let's go through the rest of April here, the next couple of weeks that we do have. And the chart is on the left-hand side of your screen with according to these colors here. So if you're in the yellow shade of color, from the Mid-Atlantic back through the Ohio Valley here in parts of the Great Plains and Midwest. You're seeing above normal severe weather here uh, through the rest of April. If you're in the red, well above normal severe weather from the Great Plains, especially the Eastern Plains into the Midwest and parts of the upper Midwest here. We may have even a couple more significant severe weather or tornado outbreaks as we go through the rest of April. Then as we go into May, I think May is going to be a big month for severe weather and tornado outbreaks from the upper Midwest Great Lakes region, south and westbound through the eastern plains here in the mid-Missouri Valley. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Well above normal severe weather up here. Even some above normal severe weather down here into places like Texas and the deep south. But I think near the southeast coast, especially the Carolinas, Georgia, and northern Florida, Florida, we'll start to see below normal severe weather as we go into May as much more of those troughs are going to be ejecting from the Four Corners region up into the Midwest instead of ejecting further to the east. So that will lead to lower severe weather. That doesn't mean you won't see any severe weather across the southeast. That will definitely occur in May, but it definitely see, you know, lower than average conditions for severe weather across those regions. Now, as we go here into June, I think we start to shut off the severe weather a little bit more more down to the south as that ridge begins to build a lot drier weather so that will lead to less severe weather near the Gulf Coast and into Texas and then over the top of that ridge as it builds north through the central plains into the high plains up through the Midwest and especially into the Ohio Valley, I can see an enhanced corridor of some severe weather potential there into June. This could also lead to what we call a derecho type of event where we could have maybe a derecho developing here in the central plains and diving east southeast through the Midwest Ohio Valley sometime into June on the northeastern periphery of that ridge as it builds further north. As we go into July, 
I think July will start to shut off the severe weather more into the Great Plains, especially the Western Plains down here into the Texas Hill Country region and the lower Mississippi Valley region. We will still see severe weather in July across this region. Just keep that in mind, but below normal or, you know, seeing less severe weather events than normal in July. Much more severe weather possible over here. This will be on the eastern quadrant of that ridge. We have that ridge building out west. We're on the eastern side of that. We're going to see an active jet stream across the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic down into the Tennessee Valley and parts of the southeast for July, so enhanced severe weather potential there. And then as we go into August, pretty normal severe weather, I think, for most of us through August, except for near the southeast coast and near the Gulf Coast as well, from Texas through Florida, up there through the Carolinas, Virginia, and West Virginia. I think this is more enhanced and driven by a tropical system, potentially, as we go into August, enhancing severe weather potential, likely tornadoes across these areas, if a landfalling system does occur later on this summer. Now looking here, speaking of the hurricane season, let's preview that here because our sea surface water temperatures are extremely off the charts right now. It's only April 12th today and we are already seeing June, July type of water environments down here where we have the main development region, the MDR, very warm, the Caribbean's very warm, the Gulf of Mexico is warm in spots, especially near the Yucatan and the Northwest Gulf. The Eastern Gulf, closer to Florida, still has some work to do, but that will warm up. The Northwestern Atlantic Basin up here near the North New England coast in the mid-Atlantic coast, still pretty below normal, but that will also warm up as we do go deeper into the hurricane season. And here's the Atlantic hurricane season climatology. And you can see as we go into August, that starts to tick upward and then really take off into September, October. That's the peak of the hurricane season in the Atlantic basin is around that second week or so into September. Compare that to the Eastern Pacific basin. Now we are in a La Nina or trending towards that. So that means we're going to kind of shut off this. I think this is going to be trending later of a start time for the Eastern Pacific and also end earlier. So it's going to be overall a shorter hurricane season for the Eastern Pacific Basin. But I do think that we could still see some events over there into the Eastern Pacific Basin as well. But right now our focus is on the North Atlantic. So let's look here at May. You have that Bermuda High up here pretty far away. So we can still see that steering current usually right now away from the United States. So we're still clear as we go into May. There could be a couple of earlier events through here, but I'm not keeping that close of an eye on it. I think May is overall going to be pretty tame. We have to watch a cold front off the southeast coast. If we have one of those cold fronts dropping through Florida, if the one of those cold fronts stall near the Gulf Coast or the Carolina Coast there, sure, we could see a tropical system brew up as we go into May, but overall May not looking that big of a deal, looking like a tame month. Now, as we go into June, that Bermuda High starts to expand, starts to intensify across the Northeast Atlantic Ocean. That means the steering current is going to be further to the south and further west as we go into June. You can see more of the main development region lighting up here with those tropical waves coming off Africa, moving through the lesser. Antilles, the Caribbean could be big there in June and into the Gulf perhaps as well as early as June. Then as we go into July, that Bermuda high gets even stronger. So the steering current again is further south and further west. There we go again, main development region into the Caribbean and perhaps near the Yucatan over here into July. And I think August as we go into September and also October, that Bermuda high is not going anywhere, folks. It's going to be strong and it's going to lead to a very persistent steering current further to the south. And that would lead more storms into the Caribbean and the Gulf and maybe the western and northwestern Atlantic Basin on the outer periphery here of a high pressure system. And that into August will lead to, I think, the start of a very busy hurricane season. It will take time to get started, but I think once we get into August, we're really going to start to see that light up in the Caribbean, maybe the Gulf. September looks to be a very big month for the Caribbean and the Gulf and maybe some landfalling systems for the United States. And then October, we still see above normal precip here through the Caribbean and the Western Atlantic Basin here as well. So definitely keeping a very close eye, especially in August, September, and October. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy today's content, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. I'll keep you covered on everything weather throughout the year. Make sure to give it a like down below with the thumbs up. I definitely appreciate it and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day out there.